very few examples of food that you can find in the streets of Malaysia. Today, I will not want to spoil you so much with good words to describe this food, but what I want to do instead is that I want to paint you guys a dark side to this picture. Can you give a guess what the dark side to this picture is all about? Food waste. At this point of time, I'm talking. A lot of good food are being wasted around the world. A lot of it. I can even guarantee you there are people wasting food right now at this point of time. Food waste has become a norm. Food waste has become an issue that we've been neglecting over decades, over decades, or even centuries. Why are we wasting food? When we know people out there is dying of hunger, when we know people out there who struggles to meet end needs, and we know people out there who is in need of food, and yet we are wasting food. You have to know that feeding the landfill does not add value to the society, but feeding the people do. Look at the recent crisis of Venezuela. The country is torn apart. People in Venezuela are deprived of hunger. Let us not just look at Venezuela, uh, Malaysia as well. There are people who are in starvation. There are people who live in urban poor community. And yet, we are wasting food. I always believe that we can up, if we can uplift people out of poverty, the people who we uplift them, they will want to contribute more to the country economy and create a happier nation. Because I always believe the only way out of poverty, okay? because I always believe that, the, that people are the roots of the nation. This is the statistics I'd like to share to you guys to show you guys how much food is being wasted on human consumption and also how much food is being wasted from the farm to the table. And yeah, we dare to say that there's not enough supply of vegetables and meat in the market when we throw one third of food what we produce every day. This is just crazy. Don't we appreciate the life of the animals who has been sacrificed for us to eat barbecue or even go to Nando's? Don't we appreciate that? And yet, we even want to go to an extent to say that we need to, do, we go, we need to cut down trees, deforestation, just to open up new farms, to breed more cows, to breed more chicken, when our food management has an issue. We are throwing one third of what we produce every day to the landfill. Let me share you a personal story. Last year itself, when I came to know a family of eight, right, the mother has seven children. And she was married twice, divorced twice, and she was left alone with seven kids. And she only had 2,000 ringgit a month. And the government is only, and the government aids her, that makes up to about 3,000 ringgit a month. And do you think 3,000 ringgit a month in Malaysia is enough? It's not enough. But what can be done better instead is that we channel the grocery surplus to her, where she can pay less to get more. Or even better, we give her for free. Because if we can help her to reduce her burden on spending on food expenses, she will have more money to spend on the child education and also on the child welfare. Because I always believe the only way out of poverty is education. Another story that I'd like to share with you as well is that when we were on the streets last year, giving food to the street people, saving food from restaurants and passing it to these street people, one of the uncles shared me his story. He said that the bank mortgaged his house, mortgaged his car, took everything away from him. The reason why he could live another day is because people like you give them hope. People like you give them clothes. People like you give them food. The moment they receive food from you is the moment they know there's no need for them to die of starvation or even go to sleep in starvation. I'd like to take this opportunity with all of you here to put your hands together to thank those who have done that. Let's give, those, uh, give, let's give them a round of applause for those who are feeding the street people. Let's thank them in this moment. Because without you people giving this food to the streets people, these people would have been dead the next day. You are the reason why they could live another day. You are the reason why you could give them hope. So that's why today, I'm here today to tell you guys about the food crisis that you and I can solve. How is that so? Let me share you. But before I go into that, I'd like to share you something about me to win your confidence and to win your belief into the, an idea that you can incorporate this in your own community or even bring, base, bring this back to your own state and run this. At the age of 19, I was born on April 2nd, 1996. At the age of 19, I was a victim of depression. The reason why I found the depression is because I was in a broken relationship and I lost someone I truly love. After that, one day, my best friend managed to convince me to leave the room, to leave the house, to meet a stranger who happens to become one of my mentors today. I still remember on my first day, 
that when I sat in front of my mentor for three hours straight, right, when I was sharing to him, he was painting his miniature. It took me three hours to share, and the moment that I could share what was bothering in me, he, he spent, he understands me, he spent three things onto me. He spent his money, he spent his knowledge, and he spent his time onto me just to make sure that I could walk again. And the moment that I could walk again was the moment I was curious to find out who I was in life. From there, I went on to volunteer into a lot of platform and suddenly came a calling saying that I was good into environmentalism. So I gave a try into environmentalism and two years later, Green Hero was formed. And people started to call me Green Hero and all of these things. And what Green Hero is this all about and how we started this, another story I'd like to share with you. Is that last year, it's uh, one and a half years ago, we were, on this, we were at Victoria Street. It's at Josh now. It was quite late night and we were walking down this street and we saw a waiter brought out a black garbage bag. So he brought out this black, ga black garbage bag he put beside the bin. So as my, as my partner and I were walking down that, down that lane, we smelled something. Usually when people see garbage bag or smell it, right, they were like, yeah, stinky, stinky, go away. But for us, we were attracted to that smell. Do you want to know what the smell was? It was actually something, something so strawberryish. It was so strawberries that, I, that, I, that my partner said they could, they could have sprayed Febreze on the garbage bag just to avoid pests. Then look at him. Are you crazy? Who wants to spend profit on Febreze just to spray on a garbage bag? So I, we both argue. Then I said, it's okay. Let me go and check. So when I go to that bag, I open that bag. My jaw just dropped. I couldn't believe to what I saw. What I saw, what I saw was actually croissant, cronut, all the good pastries in the bag itself. On that very night, I was angry, frustrated, and empowered at the same time to solve this issue. When I got back home, I couldn't sleep the whole night. So what happened was that I go online, and suddenly, France, France was on the head. Uh, France was actually on the headline, saying that they are the first country in the world to legalize the law, saying no to food waste. And that was my aha moment. So what we did was that we created an online platform for F and B businesses around the world, in Malaysia as well to actually sell the food surplus where consumers can buy them at a discounted price. So what food do we sell if you, if you ever ask? So these are the type of foods like bread, sushi, vegetables, fruits. All of these foods are being thrown every day. If you go to the bakery, most of the bread they are forced to throw every night due to the company policy, saying that the bread, because due to their objective where they, they want to maintain it as freshly baked. But you have to know that all of this bread have a lifespan of at least three days, but yet they are throwing it every day. If it still can be eaten the next day or the day after, why don't we sell it cheaper online for people to buy them? Like sushi, for example, last order is at 9.15 p.m. So what happens to the sushi after 9.15 p.m.? Usually most of them will just throw it away. If you go to the sushi, don't believe me, go to the sushi, wait until 9.15, wait for their last order, observe what happens after that. You will see most of the good sushi from Sushi Belt are being thrown. Why don't we sell it after 9.30 for a cheaper price or even 60 to 80% discount? Who knows, maybe some of our friends go and watch Premier League and they want to eat something at home. You can just trade all the sushi or bread, send it to your home and you can watch Premier League with your friends and eating surplus food. This is a very few examples of how much food are being wasted every day. And not just that as well. Fruits and vegetables. This is a challenge that I want to show to you guys. That if you are going to the wet market tomorrow, Go and look for this uh, fruit or vegetables vendor. Try to search for this blue basket, blue pail or bamboo basket and look for it. And try to see how much good and eatable vegetables that you can find are being dumped into that. The reason why they throw that, it's because they cannot sell for a higher profit because the vegetables, maybe they're too, black or too, they're too many black spots and if they were to peel off too many, the vegetables will become smaller and they cannot sell for a higher profit. Or even some, they may be odd-looking shaped vegetables or fruits. That's why they're throwing this. And I, dare, and I challenge you to challenge all of you to go and search for it, and you'll be surprised to see that most of them are still edible in that in the basket itself. And also at the same time, why don't we also create an online platform for F and B businesses to, to actually tell people, hey, there's actually food surplus here. Why don't you uh, why don't we get volunteers who, who has time at night itself to go and rescue this food? from the hotels and channel it to, to the street people or even channel it to the urban poor community or even better, to the strays. A lot of food are being wasted from hotels and events. Why don't we get people who have free time at night, who wants to do good, who wants to actually help with, to the environment and also wants to help the urban poor? Why don't we get them to go online, get this food surplus to channel to those who really want it?
and needs it to consume it. So these are the few activities that we did that Penang people, that Penang Lang is so concerned of this food waste issue that they are willing to dedicate their time into really putting an impact into Penang to make sure that no food waste are being wasted every night itself. And students, you from all different ages come together to, to fight against food waste. So by doing all of these things, there must be a way to measure the impact. So how do we measure impact? Basically, last year itself, we managed to prevent at least 30,000 tons of food waste. And from out of that, how much this food that we, how much this food that the platform earns itself, it's already nearly up to 15k USD. And through till today, until now, we have 3,000 strong green members who are actively volunteering the time to rescue this food, channel it to those in need, to make sure that Penang will always be low in food wastage. And also currently, this platform itself has already been running in two states and also at the same time, have over 70 merchants partnering into this platform, getting people to tell them, hey, we got food surplus. Can you help, can you help to save this and channel to those who really, you really know? And through this platform itself, in Penang currently, 11 families are being supported with this initiative through this effort. I always believe that food should be eaten, not thrown away. So generally, to those who really can consume them, and also, by looking at this thing, how much CO, by doing all of this effort, we managed to prevent at least 57,000 tons of CO2. You have to know that food waste produce methane gas. And methane gas is part of the greenhouse gases. And by doing this effort, this is how much Penang Lang has already doing this. Let us thank those people who volunteered their time. Let us give them a round of applause for preventing 57,000 of CO2. Because without these people, we could never achieve this number. Okay. And also, can, since we're living in a digital era, why don't we use technology? Why don't we use an app? We download this app, when you open the app itself, you suddenly receive a notification, hey, okay, there's a, actually a nearby hotel that needs someone to rescue the food. Well, anyone can go there. Or even better, you go online itself to see what are the food being offered to the platform itself. Buy it so that you can save the environment. Buy it so that you can save money for yourself as well. If let's say you don't, if you can't consume them, you can even buy it and buy for or orphanages or even to other people who can't afford them. This, we are living in a digital era and I always believe we need to use it to a good cause. Since most of us here are on Facebook, WhatsApp and on email, why don't we use this for a greater cause? Why don't we tell people, hey, there's actually food in, uh, in this particular hotel, there's food in this particular event, why don't we go and get rescue this food and channel it to those in need? You can even create a Facebook group, WhatsApp group and tell these people that, there's actually food saving tonight. Let's go. Let's go and save this food. There's people that is in need. Do this. Because we are, living in a we are living in a digital era. Technology is here for a reason. And I always believe technology here is to make life better and also at the same time to solve a social issue. So let us not use Facebook and uh, WhatsApp to post negative things, but instead utilize them for a greater cause to make a greater change for Malaysia and also for the world. So what is the next end game that we expect this? Is that we expect this to grow to 10,000 green hero people to save this food from wastage itself. Because earlier that I shared, a lot of food are being wasted. And to be exact, at least 18,000 tons every day are being wasted. And besides that as well, we hope this can be running up in three states and at the same time to reduce at least 600 kg of food waste in a week itself or even better, more. This is just the minimum scope that we put up. And what is the call to action for this? So basically, uh, we hope that after this session itself, is that you can go back, tell your friend about this idea. Hey, why don't we create a Facebook group? Why don't we create a WhatsApp group that we can actually add all these people and go and call up a nearest event company or call up the nearest hotel, tell them about your effort that you want to rescue this food and give it to those in need. I'm pretty sure more, they are more than happy to give to you rather than throwing to the landfill. Talk to them. You will do good for the society. And also at itself, you can also create your own food bank in your own community. Why food bank is very important is because let's say a disaster strike in your area, you have a food bank, you can actually channel it to your own community that is in need of food. Or even better, if let's say another place uh, got, is, in, in, is, is in crisis and you have surplus of food, you can actually bring it to them. If let's say you don't have a food bank in your own community, Georgetown has at least two food banks. You can actually search it up and actually bring this grocery surplus and donate to the food bank at Georgetown itself. Okay, you have, uh, let's say you're doing spring at the end of this month, look out for any food in your, in your, in your, in, in the cabinet that whatever food that you don't consume anymore, don't leave it there to rot, but instead bring it to the food bank because this food bank are the people who really need of food. And if you have surplus, give it to them. 
Because at the end of the day, you are doing for a greater cause because you help to reduce food waste and you as well give them hope to live another day so that they don't need to die of starvation. And also last year itself, I was very fortunate to meet one of the Nobel Peace Prize winner, Professor Muhammad Yunus. He is my role and he's my inspiration and role model to run a social enterprise. He te- he, I really like him how he, how he really shaped my mindset that social enterprise is here for a reason, to make the world a better place and also to, to solve a social issue that the world is facing. And last but not least, I'd like to end this with a quote. I have said I don't want to protect the environment. But what I want is that I want to create an environment where the environment does not need protection at all. Thank you.